of Some of us might be familiar with this bishop from his sermon now, the at the royal wedding between Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And, three. and um, in 2019, he wrote this book. Um, today, we'll be going through chapters 1 through 6 really quickly. So please stick with me. I'll start with an introduction. The author introduced himself as an African-American and he spoke of how members of his family fought in wars for democracy, you know, for the United States of America, but having to come home to know democracy because of racism. He spoke of how they loved America so much, yet America didn't love them back. And the central, one of the central messages of this book is to never let anyone drag you so low so as to make you hate them. Yeah. The way of Christ is the way of love, he says. And the way of love is the only way to freedom. The way of love is how we stay decent in indecent times. And he has asked us not to laugh at anyone's religion or beliefs. For us to respect the Lord, however he comes. Our goal is to love all God's creation on earth as they come. We do not have a monopoly on the love of God or in the worship of God. And this book is a guide on love for living, for relationships, for leaders, individuals, for spiritual, material, and physical well-being. And there is an universal hunger in the heart of every human being to love and to be loved. And this book emphasizes on that and states that love knows no bounds. Faith in God is faith in hearts. And when we say faith in us, we, we mean faith in human beings. You can't say you have faith in God and not have faith in human beings. And we are all called to change the world. Like we have been called before to do so. And we have accomplished this task before. We are all called again to make the world into a place of peace and joy. I'll go straight into chapter one now, which is titled, What is this thing called love? And it is birthed from the question, what is love? And when we look at love, we remember the Greek words eros, philia, and agape, which mean romantic, fraternal, and sacrificial love, respectively. But today we concern ourselves with agape, a love that seeks the good and well-being of others, the society, and the world at large. So what is love, really? Love is a firm commitment to act for the well-being of someone other than yourself. Love gives Love doesn't take. Let's look at the example for everyone. When you talk to any Christian, you think of John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And let's just I, underline, he gave. God didn't take, he gave. And this is what love is, sacrifice. We all know First Corinthians 13. Personally, one of my absolute favorites. I can recite the whole thing in my sleep. I love it so much. And it says, if I gave or speak, or speak, if I speak in the tongue of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends and honestly this 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 particular passage speaks to my heart in such a marvelous way when we think about what love truly is are you kind are you patient are you not envious boastful How about arrogance are you rude these are all the things we should think about when we when we, when we think on what love is you know, it doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing. It does not insist on its own way. And, you know, a lot of times when we think about the opposite of love, we think, oh, if I don't love this person, I hate them. But this book begs to differ. The opposite of love is not hate. It is selfishness. Let's think about that for a second. 
the opposite of love is not hate is not hate but selfishness hate is only a symptom of selfishness love is not sleepy or sedative it is fierce love is an action love is force it follows through love acts selfishness excludes meanwhile love makes room and includes where selfishness puts down love uplifts where selfishness hurts and harms love helps and heals where selfishness enslaves love sets free and liberates love doesn't stop with our friends and families and our loved ones love reaches out love is without boundaries love calls out for us to sacrifice not because it feels good but because it is the right thing to do you know not much can be done without hope and faith but even the holy book says when you compare all three love remains the greatest because of faith and hope we it, we get educated we get married we don't know what how this will end but we hope or we have faith in these things ending well but love is what holds us and sees us through you know all the bad news on tv and the you know even in the face of all these overwhelming difficulties we go through daily in life love is what grounds us and <laughs> one big misunderstanding is that love is easy love is not easy but with repetition we get better and that is the found um the real message of chapter 1 now chapter 2 looking for god the question is how do i find god's love the book says you can't love in isolation you know you don't think love you do love capital d o you actually do love and so it is important to find a community of people who want to give and receive love you know god is a source of love but we human beings we are the conduits of love we are the vessels and we can love through imagination we love by acting it out and resting in god's hands is more than just going to a house of worship but actually building a community of love because uh, some of us you know we we tend to isolate ourselves especially into our little bubbles and oh we have our own little christian communities but actually reaching out you'll be surprised at the places you find real genuine love you know being willing to ask ask for help and being willing to receive it when it is offered i struggling with that because when you're very self sufficient but all of the, it doesn't mean um you now be unguarded but we are asked now to drop that guard and be vulnerable and it's not going to be easy but we may be part of a faith community now but are not even feel genuine love so this is what we're try, uh, trying to talk about here that the idea is to find the bravery to be vulnerable and be trusting with people where we find true love and god's love is everywhere at every time including inside of us let us remember that in our search for god let's look inward and be able to communicate that with other people and understand that we cannot love by ourselves a tree doesn't make a forest and we are made social we are made to commune we are made to fellowship chapter 3 quickly title making do and making new the question that birth this is how do i find the energy to keep loving when the world seems to be going the other way and this can be really discouraging i for one i don't really even listen to the news anymore i remember watching cnn with my mom when i was probably 6 or 7 and i was intrigued i loved cnn i loved al jazeera and it's just always bad news and even today as a married woman i tune into any of these channels it's still bad news so how do we find that energy to keep going on when what's the difference what's the change the thing is that we've always had to make do especially as black people in the recent times we've always had to make do we've always been trampled on we've always had to overcome so much difficulty but we need to take all the little that we have and make a lot with it and this is what we've been asked to do making do is not the same as giving up and it's definitely not the same as giving in to the norm it is about figuring out how to both survive and thrive given the current resources we have a way to overcome evil with good 
by recognizing and fashioning and molding that good out of the evil or bad situations we might find ourselves in. For example, the world we are in today, we won't necessarily call it good, but we can make so much good out of what we have and out of the places we are in, out of the people in our societies and our communities. How do we do this? First of all, we have, we've been given three tips. We can do that through tradition. We can draw from a deep well of ancestral wisdom. We don't have to start from scratch. That's the good news. We can build on time-tested paths. And the best resource for that is the Holy Bible. Look at what has worked for these great men and women of old and then adapt that. The second one is imagination. You know, problems are solutions in disguise. And imagination can move given realities to creative possibilities, if only we think. And one of my favorite saying is, you can't be what you can't see. You can't get where you can't imagine. So we are encouraged to just think in a new way, make something new out of the old. And like we've, and you can tap into the former point of tradition. You don't have to start from scratch. Build on something that, that, is, that already is. And then the third and most important point is God. When we factor God into all that we do, we come to the realization that we can do all things because he always strengthens us. And even when we feel weary, when we, do, when we, when we feel like we lack the energy to go on, we have this source that never runs dry where we can tap into, and God is always there to strengthen us. Chapter 4, quickly. What Desmond Tutu and Dolly Parton have in common? And this is birthed from the question, can love really change the world? Hmm. The author says we ought to be dreamers, and dreaming is like love, and it is easily dismissed by most people because it is ethereal, naive maybe, even a setup for failure. Or is it? Desmond Tutu, just like Dolly Parton, they were dreamers. They are dreamers. And when it is darkest, dreamers see light. The language of a dream is the language of hope. And dreamers often are often, are often seen as foolish or impractical. But these dreamers are the ones that continue to evolve the world. They are the ones who change history. They are the ones who continue to save us. Dreamers pursue new possibilities where everyone else goes with the norm, where everyone else goes with what they're used to, where everyone else goes with what's comfortable. Dreamers think the other way. Everybody's going left, they go right. Dreamers are the ones that, 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 that channel or like ignite that change. And a dream may be deterred, but a dream can never be killed. It's just like energy. It takes many forms, but it can be created or destroyed. So who are your greatest influences in life, really? Are some of them still alive? Jesus is my greatest influence. He's not alive. He's been dead for over 2,000 years. And look at his message of love. It continues to live on. Michael Jackson is one of my greatest influences as well. Just so inspiring and his dance and his music and all of that. Is he alive? No. His message lives on. His message of inclusivity. His message of hope. There's so many people in the history of the world like that that keep us together and 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 just their message live on. For example, um, Dr. Martin Luther King, just like Desmond Tutu. So many people in the world, your grandparents, you know, their message live on because our bodies we feel, but we know we are more than the body. We are body, soul, and spirit. We live on. We are immortal. So we shouldn't let all the adversaries we've seen in the world today hinder our movement, hinder our progress. Get involved. Hate destroys, but love builds. And where people hurt us, we should not try to respond with hurt. Can love really change the world? Yes, it can. And it is in the hands of dreamers. The Bible tells us even, love those who curse you. And how do we commit to this? We can commit to love by one, meditating on the teachings of Jesus Christ. It is the best, honestly. Two, remembering to seek justice and reconciliation in our activism, never revenge. Sometimes when we want justice, we are so fired up. You know, it can be revenge. But let us always seek justice and reconciliation. It is always to reconcile ourselves and not just for revenge. Number three, let us walk and talk in the manner of love, in the manner of God. Let us act on that dream and not just still daydreaming. Act on it. Number four, pray daily. 
to be used by God to free all men. Because prayer, as you're praying for all men and yourselves, prayer keeps you intentional. It keeps us intentional. Number five, sacrifice personal goals in order to free all men. Check in with your loved ones. This is a, a simple you know, way you can do that in sacrificing your personal goals. We all have goals. We all have aspirations. We have itineraries. We're all busy in the world today, hyper-connected with too much information. Take a step back. Check on your loved ones. It's as simple as that. Don't sacrifice something little for people you claim to love. Number six, observe with both friends and foe common courtesy. Don't treat one different from the other. Just call that common courtesy because even in the Bible, the rain falls on both the good and the bad. God doesn't discriminate. And then seven, seek to perform regular service for others. Walk your love muscle. When we say walk your love muscle, we mean commit regularly. And this is how we get used to exercising that love muscle. Not just talking about it, but acting it out. The number eight, refrain from violence of fists, tongue and heart. <laughs> you know, some of us might not be fighters. Where there's the fists? The tongue, for example, is deadly, especially with Christians, the people who call ourselves fol followers of Christ. We can't hurt, hurt with our fists, but with our tongue, we, we sometimes do that. And let's be mindful of that. But the worst one is violence of the heart. Like the holy book says, guard your heart, especially with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Number nine, final one. Strive to be in good spiritual and bodily health because the truth is that you can't give what you don't have. So as you want to put that oxygen mask to save somebody, wear it first. You can't save somebody if you're dead yourself. So we'll go straight into chapter five. Love's calling and love's call. Love's call and love's calling. And the question is, won't loving everyone make me a doormat? You know, some, want, some may want to ask that. Should you keep toxic people in your life at the expense of your own well-being? And the answer is no. We are not called to be doormats. We are certainly, you know, we, we can't love our neighbors when we do not love our own selves ourselves. You know, this way, no one gets love. You can't give from an empty tank from the last point, the ninth point from the previous chapter. If we fail to love ourselves, we fail our neighbors too. We have to create an environment that allows for both of us to thrive. And this is a challenge because sometimes we forfeit one for the other. Now ask yourself, what do I need to be truly happy? What do I want out of life? And when you are able to just tap into the answers of this, you can tell how to strike that balance. You know, are you ashamed of who you are? Because it's from trying so hard to impress all men, ends up, you end up impressing no one, including yourself. So do you have this little deep-seated self-hatred? Do you know who you are? Are you proud of who you are? You know, to combat this, you need to know who you really are and live in accordance to whom God has called you to be and not just as an imitation of every other person you see around you. We owe it to ourselves to be the truest and best version of ourselves. Because when we are, we are able to serve others better. And we are all capable of achieving this. No one comes into this journey all self-knowing, all knowing for all things that wants to accomplish. But the sooner we all get started, the sooner we figure out who we truly are, the sooner we figure out what our capabilities are, the sooner we figure out what triggers us and what keeps us grounded. And the final chapter for, this, for today's review, chapter 6. It is not easy. And the question is, I'm not a regular person. Can my love have an impact? Sometimes we feel the world is so vast. What real impact am I having here? But we, should, we need to understand that change takes time. And we, especially in this age, we want to see the result of our <laughs> contributions immediately, imminently. But this is not so. Our job is to accomplish our part, not to be, uh, not to do every activity needed to complete the work. Just do your job. Only Jesus completes. Do your part. Your job is to do your job. <laughs> that sounds weird, but that is just the summary of it all. Your job is to do your job. What is the best time to plant a tree? You one might ask, and the best answer is twenty years ago. But what is the second best time to plant a tree? The answer is now. Think of a company, for example. How many people are required to make it happen, to make 
the company success um, succeed the own the ceo for example can never ever take the company where it needs to be without hiring people and the people being hired they need to experience these things before they go into the world and make their own establishments and they will in turn need to hire other people it is indeed scary that everyone is capable of changing the world and everyone is important and we might want to feel small when you think about that when you think in comparison to the grand plan that am i as vital to this plan but the idea is to just do your part and not overthink everything the example for my church my local church in Ibadan, we started in a garage in someone's back yard gar- garage and today we have this massive building and before coming traveling to the united kingdom you know we've all made so much impact doing our own part i'm no longer there the church continues to thrive that is our goal to just do our own job and go wherever god takes us do our job there as well go someplace else do our job as well and just understand that god keeps ordering our steps and it's not going to be easy but let us understand that it takes time and let us just walk with god's plan and whatever god will not do let it remain undone <laughs> so i'll leave you with that thank you very much for tuning into today's review please 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 go read the book for yourself and see you next monday for the three ch- um, chapters that are going to be reviewed by our other reviewers so have yourself a lovely lovely week god bless you thank you